Hello, Gaudi class, and welcome to today's maths lesson. We're going to start with our arithmetic. And again, I'd like you to time yourself four and a half minutes and see if you can get your arithmetic done in that time. Again, as always, if you want to carry on with the extension, you're welcome to do so. But we've noticed on tapestry that some of you are only doing the arithmetic. The arithmetic goes over work we've already done. These are skills we've learned. It's not new learning. The lesson that comes after it is the new learning. So if you don't have time to do everything, then ignore the arithmetic and go straight to the new learning. We're going to be going back over all of this again and again and again. What we can't do is new learning again and again and again. So please, 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 if you haven't got time for everything, just go straight to today's lesson. Otherwise, please pause the video, give yourself four and a half minutes to do the arithmetic and then come back with the answers. Now, yesterday I used my fingers and my head to find the answers. Today, I'm going to use a ruler. So we're going to do nine, take away eight. So we're going to start on nine and we're going to take eight, away eight and we're going backwards if we're taking away. And I'm going to do it slowly because I don't want to miss out any numbers. So starting from nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm getting all the way back to the number one. 13, add a three. So if I'm adding, it's getting bigger. So I've got 13 and I'm gonna add three. One, two, three. And the reason I use both my hands is because if I've already got my finger on 13, I can't put this finger on 13. So I know not to count that one twice. I've got to count the one next to it. One, two, three. So the answer to that one is 16. Double three. So we were talking about doubles at the end of last week which means do the same number twice. So double three means three and three again. So if we've got three and three again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, for the last few days, I've been doing the extension on the board behind me, but I thought I'd show you another way of doing this extension. You have to start with a number bigger than two, because if I started with one and I tried to do one take away two, I wouldn't be able to. I don't have enough. So I'm going to choose a number and I'm going to choose numbers I can count on my fingers. So I'm going to start with eight. OK, if I show you eight fingers, I want to be left with two. So I'm going to put these two down because they're the two I want to be left with, kind of put them sideways. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many I have to put down before I've just got those two. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that just leaves me the two I wanted. So if I've got eight and I take away six, I have two. I think I'm gonna do 10 this time, and I want to have two fingers left. So I'm gonna put a full 10, and again, I just want two, so I'm gonna put those two this time. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that I've got to put down to be able to get that 10. So two, sorry. 10 take away eight. Um, I'm going to do two this time, two take away something. So if I start with two and I want two left at the end, so I want those two left, which means I haven't got any other fingers to put down. I've got no fingers, zero fingers to put down. And there are different numbers you can have for that. There are lots and lots of different answers you could have <clears throat> had, pardon me. So just choose. I thought I'd show you a different way. Challenge two. We've got 42 as 17, so I'm going to look at my ones. Oh, I've got a seven here. I don't like counting those in my head, so I'm going to use my tens and ones. I don't have to, because actually I'm not going to be carrying, but I like to do the big numbers on the tens and ones. Two add seven, seven, eight, nine, and four add one, four, five. So the answer is 59. So like I said, I could have done that without the tens and ones, but I like to use my tens and ones when I've got big numbers, big ones. Five times six, I don't know my six times table very well, but I do know my five times table. So I'm going to swap those round. And instead of doing five times six, I'm going to do six times five. So I'm gonna put up six fingers, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm getting really good at not being tricked by these questions now. 
So I'm not doing an add, I'm doing a takeaway. So I've got to do 36, takeaway nine to get to the answer. So 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27. And I'm just going to check that 27 and nine to just make sure my answer is right. So 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Phew, right answer. Now, I was thinking about these extensions yesterday and I am um, quite a, uh, I like to do my work in order. I like it to be laid out neatly. Um, so if you're like me, then 52 add zero, add zero, 51 add one, add zero. And carrying on that way makes me feel good because then I know I've done everything. But actually, I don't need you to do every answer there is in the world for this. So it doesn't actually matter which numbers you start with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like I did yesterday. And I'm just going to start with 20 add 20 because I know that's 40. And so that's not as high as 52. And then 40, 52. So I've got 52 all together there, 20, 40, 52. Now I'm going to take 10 from this pile and move it to the other piles. So I'm going to take 10 from that pile and I'm going to add it to this middle pile, which means I'm leaving the end number alone because I only want to touch two numbers. I could have taken the 10 from that pile, left the middle number alone and added the 10 to my end pile. So taken the 10 from here, and scooted it across to here, added it on here. So take it away here, add it here, which is what I've done at the bottom. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add five to this one. Um, and so I've got to take that five from one of the other piles. So I'm gonna take that pile, that one from that pile there, which means that that one stays the same. I could have added the, um, the five to that pile, left the middle pile alone, and taken the five away from that pile. It doesn't matter, my answer would still be the same. Lots and lots of different answers again. Right, let's move on to what we're looking at today. And today we're going to be looking at sharing equally and that equally is incredibly important. So the number one rule of sharing is that everything has to be fair and equal. So as you can see, but all of these have two suites each. So everything's always got to be equal. If it's not equal, we've got problems. So there's a video I'd like you to watch and the link to it is in the description below this one. You can either pause and watch it now and then come back and do the rest of the lesson with me or you can leave it and do it before you do your work. It's not the most important thing for you to do, watch it before we do our work. It'll just make our work a lot easier if you already understand. So we're going to have a look at sharing. And when we share, we start the total amount and share out one object at a time. So I'm going to show you how to share six objects between two groups. So here are my two groups, one group here and one group here, and I've got six objects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give one of my objects here, one, and then I'm gonna move over and put one object here, two. Back to the first group, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna stop when I get to six. So I've taken it in turns for each group so that I can check that they're equal. Now I'm gonna count how many in each group. So I have one, two, three here, and I have one, two, three here. So yay, my groups are equal. Nobody's gonna complain that they've got more than somebody else. It's fair. Right. I have got six eggs and I have got one, two, three baskets. So I'm gonna share my six eggs into my three baskets. So I'm going to give this basket one egg and this basket one egg and this basket one egg. So they've all got one each and I've still got eggs left over. So I'm gonna carry on sharing one, that one there, that one there and that one there. And I'm just going to check I, they are equal. So I have got two eggs in this basket, two eggs in this basket and two eggs in this basket. So yes, I have shared them equally it is fair this time i have got one two three four five six seven eight cubes to share between two baskets so again i am going to share one there one there and then one there and one there and then one there and one there and then one there and one there 
and I'm going to check again. I have got one, two, three, four here, and I have got one, two, three, four here. So they are equal and fair. Right, now I have got one, two, three, four baskets, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 flowers. So let's do one at a time. One, 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 and one, 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 one. I've got one, two, three flowers in that basket, one, two, three flowers in that basket, one, two, three flowers in that basket, and one, two, three flowers in that basket. So I have got the same amount, an equal amount, in each of my baskets. Right, it is your turn, and you'll be pleased to know that you are running around the house looking for items again today. So challenge one, you have got two sentences to write for me. Firstly, I want you to go and find six items. Now these don't have to be the same, but they just need to be six things. So six toys, six pieces of pasta, six pencils, six cups, six plates, whatever you like. And I'd like you to share them into two groups. So you've got six things to get and you're going to share them into two groups. And then you are just going to write the sentence. And if you can get somebody else to write the sentence for you, so you just have to fill in the number, you're very lucky. So your stem sentence, there are however many objects in each group. So you're going to get your six object. You're going to divide them into two groups, which is pretty much what I did at the beginning of this lesson. And you're going to say how many objects there are in each group. So there are so many objects in each group. The second one is to find eight objects and share them into four groups. And again, you can just take a photo of what you've done and write the stem sentence. There are how many objects in each group. Next one, if you're doing challenge two. I'd like you to find 10 objects and share them into five groups. And again, you've got the sentence, there are objects in each group. So please write out the whole sentence and not just the word that goes, the number that goes there. And the next one you've got is to find 12 objects and share them into three groups. And again, write out the sentence, there are objects in each group. So fill in the number there for how many objects there are in each group. Challenge three, our numbers are just getting higher, so be careful. You've got six to find 16 objects and share them into four groups, or 18 objects and share them into three groups. And again, you're going to write the sentences that go with them. So you could get your objects, put them into groups on your table or on your floor, and just put a piece of paper next to them that says, there are so many objects and please make sure you fill that one in, in each group. So it's almost like a label for your picture. And your extension. Zara has 25 sweets. She shares them between five cups. How many sweets should be in each cup? And that is your maths for today. So have fun moving your objects around. Please, please, please make sure they all go back where they belong when you finish with them. Make sure you put them back where they belong when you finish with them. Not give it, make, leave it for a grown up to clear up after you. And I look forward to seeing your work on tapestry. And I'll see you for the next lesson. <laughs>